What's up guys, XM360 here, and in today's video, in my pursuit to review all the lasers I can get my hands on, I finally got a Wicked Laser Spider 3 Inferno, so I'm going to review that for you guys today. Many of you know that Wicked Lasers does not ship to the United States anymore, and they haven't for years, so I did have to get this one second hand off eBay. It is used, but it's in very, very good condition, and obviously I won't have the original accessories just because I got it second hand. All I have is the laser itself and a battery and that's about it this is labeled as the one watt model it's a couple years old currently they sell the 750 milliwatt model on their website for three hundred dollars and my guess is going to be that this is the same exact thing as the 750 watt model i mean milliwatt not watt um because i had heard a lot of people saying that the the older wicked laser spider threes were they had the the labels were over spec meaning it would be labeled as one watt but in reality it would only be like 750 milliwatts and then wicked lasers kind of made their labels more accurate and more true to what the true power is so this is probably the same version of the laser as the one that they are currently selling so taking a look at this safety label one other thing to mention is that this is a 635 nanometer um laser that is the red color but that's not the typical 650 nanometer color that you see more often it's more of a I don't know it's tough to describe I'm gonna try to do a comparison video of 650 versus um, 635 but 635 is more of in my opinion kind of like a ruby red I, I don't know if that's a good comparison but I am gonna show you guys a comparison in a later video so this host is all metal I think they call it like aircraft grade aluminum or something like that on the very bottom of the laser there's this little end cap that you unscrew and that's how you get access to where the battery is. This laser takes one 18650 rechargeable lithium ion battery and it goes in positive end up and this is not the original battery that is an extra I have. And on the little end cap there is also the button to turn on the laser on the very bottom and then on the side of the end cap there is that little circular bump that's actually a safety key that you can remove and if you remove that it makes the laser completely dead nobody will be able to turn it on or use it but that safety key is really tough to remove and it's kind of that way with all of the wicked laser spider 3 models I usually have to use a sharp knife and wedge it under there to take that safety key out now to actually turn on the laser you hit the button on the bottom and you'll see the lights start to flash on the side once those buttons are flashing, you then go to the side of the laser to that little button on the side that's called the smart switch. And you have to enter in a short little passcode, and it's the same with all of these lasers. It's one click followed by two quick clicks, and then one long click, and then another long click, and that's how you turn on the laser. I'm going to show you guys some of the modes and some of the um, how visible it is in different lighting levels a little bit later in the video. On the very top of the laser, you'll see a little lens that is removable you can unscrew it and the one that comes with it the one that will be on the laser when you receive it it says 100 percent and that's basically just the standard glass lens it doesn't do any effects or diminish the power of your laser it's just a normal glass lens to protect the inner lens of the laser which is right here i you should definitely keep that on there at all times because that is replaceable and you can get a new one i think for about 15 dollars is what i paid when i had to replace one from wicked lasers but if you scratch the inner lens of your laser then you're really going to be in trouble because that's harder and more difficult to fix so moving on to showing you guys how visible this laser is this is kind of like a dim indoor setting and turning the laser on there are four different modes there's a low power mode which is this first mode right here and then you can do a high power mode and then there's also a flashing mode that you can do in low power and high power so those are the four different modes that red dot is very bright and very visible and the beam is a little bit visible indoors too if you're looking down the axis of the laser from directly behind the laser. If you're holding the laser sideways you really can't see the beam indoors. But always make sure you use laser safety glasses whenever working with this laser because it's very bright and you don't want to get any indirect or direct eye damage. And moving to an outdoor setting, you can see that dot very well in the daytime. Um, obviously you can't really see the beam because it's too bright out. but that dot is very visible for a red laser. I'm not very good at judging distances, but I do know that rock wall across the way is at least 100 feet away, maybe 200, and it's completely visible from that distance and I could definitely go further. Moving to an outdoor nighttime setting, this is where you're going to get some of the best results as far as beam visibility goes, especially if you get a foggy night. And even if you get a foggy like morning, not complete daytime, but like morning, 
you can see the beam extremely well but right now it's not very foggy and I can still see that beam even if I'm holding the laser sideways I can still kinda see the beam in front of me red lasers generally are not very visible just because they're far from the number of peak visibility which is 555 nanometers and that would be like a greenish color so red is kind of not that visible usually but this one's very strong and as you can tell you can see the beam and dot very well at night and I didn't get a foggy night but if you ever get a foggy night try it because the things like a lightsaber it looks great now one thing I am noticing which I'm not sure how well you guys can see on the camera is the beam on this one is just slightly slightly crooked it's very very minute and most people probably wouldn't even notice it but I'm always very critical of that and I always check with my lasers to see how well the beam is aligned with the host this one's just slightly crooked so I mean it's not a huge deal because most people probably like I said wouldn't notice it but I did want to point that out I'm gonna move to actually testing this laser with my laser B a LPM right now and I'm gonna speed up the results because I don't want to spend six or seven minutes of the video just watching the numbers climb so starting with low power mode the result of the first test is about 330 milliwatts and moving on to the second test I'm getting a very consistent result I'm also getting about 330 milliwatts so that's gonna be the strength of low power mode on this laser about 330 milliwatts moving on to the testing for the high power mode the first test on high power mode is giving me a result of about 815 milliwatts and for the second test I'm getting a bit of a lower result at about 790 milliwatts and for the third test I'm getting a result of about 790 again so going between those two the first one was probably a bit more inaccurate it might have just been my LPM um, I don't know the the consistent results seem to be 790 so I'm gonna I'm gonna say maybe about 795 so that's pretty on par with the um, the current labeled version of the Inferno the one that they're currently selling that says 750 milliwatts that's actually a bit over spec but it is under spec for what is on the label of my older version which is one watt so what I'm gonna move on to now is the burn test and I am using the focusing lens for this and I'm gonna start off with some matches I do pretty much have the focal point figured out the area where the dot is gonna be the smallest so I will get the best burning results because the laser is the most uh, focused and concentrated in that area I am also using a kind of like a stone as my backdrop so that the laser doesn't burn anything in the background and I am using my laser safety glasses and I do have water down below to drop anything that does catch on fire into so those first three matches lit in under a second extremely quickly I'm um, just kind of burning the handle of the match right now to create some smoke and kind of make the beam a little bit more visible because the more smoke I make in here the more visible that beam will be and you might be able to see the focal point a little bit better um, I'm not gonna be able to light the handle on fire though because they make that material to not light on fire easily so that it doesn't burn your fingers while you're holding the match next up I'm gonna do some black electric tape and it's just cutting through this like butter it's cutting through it extremely quickly and I'm actually very impressed by the burning results this is great it's going through it like nothing I'm able to cut a little section of electric tape in under like three seconds so that's great next up I have a green balloon and instantly pops it so I was kind of expecting that pretty much all the burning lasers will instantly pop balloons if they're not like a white color but I could probably even do a white colored balloon instantly with this one too I don't have one unfortunately to test it next up is a small section of cardboard from a cereal box and you can immediately see smoke coming off it I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it to light on fire just based on what I'm seeing right now but I am seeing a lot of black etch marks I could probably etch a name in here pretty quickly next up I have a small little white piece of envelope paper and same thing as the cardboard immediately seeing smoke um, I'm kind of seeing little kind of burn holes like it wants to start a fire but it just doesn't have enough heat or enough um, consistency to start a flame I'm gonna kind of speed this up to show you guys the results so after about 20 seconds you can see there's kind of like a little red ember there and it wants to start a fire but it, I don't know if it doesn't have enough oxygen or it, it's very close to starting a fire and if I spent some more time with it I probably could get a flame going so for the last burn test I have the black CD case that I use for 
a lot of my burn tests I see if I can burn through the entire case and it's kind of like the same plastic material that the the um, electrical tape was made out of right away upon making contact you can see lots of smoke coming off it and I'm actually seeing it already going through completely so just after a couple of seconds I burned completely through the CD case so this laser has some really good burning capability and I'm gonna kinda use this to transition into the reviewing aspect of it so starting with the host itself I really love the hosts on the spider 3 lasers I think they're probably the best laser pointer hosts out there in my opinion um, the way you can change out the lens caps and the smart switch and everything I love all of it besides the little safety pin they need to make those safety pins easier to remove um, I wasn't really too annoyed about the slightly crooked beam because I mean the more and more I look at it yes it's very slightly crooked but I, I wouldn't have even noticed if I was anybody else besides myself I mean I'm so critical on the beam um, straightness it's not a big deal with this one it's very minute the strength of this laser was pretty on par with what they currently advertise it at at 750 milliwatts so I am glad that they corrected that and they now advertise it at the correct um, power rating and I don't really have too many negatives to say about this laser besides the price tag of uh, $300 is a bit on the higher end and I know that's kind of a given with Wicked Lasers products they're pretty much always on the higher end as far as price goes but I really wish they were a bit more competitive with their pricing so you will have to fork over a lot of money for this um, one big con or something I should at least mention to you guys is that that focusing lens that you need for the best burning capabilities that focusing lens is not included with the laser you will have to give an extra fifty dollars to get the expanded lens kit which comes with some other lenses as well but for the focusing lens which is used to do the the good burning um, you wouldn't be able to get the same burning results without the focusing lens you will need to spend an extra fifty dollars so that's kind of unfortunate and I, I was very pleased with the burning results I thought the burning results on this one was great and I was able to burn everything within seconds it is kind of a con that they don't ship to the United States and I think there's like three other nations as well that they don't ship to but that's not necessarily their fault that's kind of a result of the new shipping laws that prevent the importing of very high powered lasers like this one so I mean I can't really hold that against them overall I like this laser a lot besides the price tag and the extra fee for the lenses I would give this one probably like an eight and a half or a nine out of ten so if you guys found this review helpful in any way at all hit that like button down below and if you're new to my channel hit that subscribe button for a bunch more great laser reviews just like this one and as always guys thank you for watching from xm360